G'day there guys, just a quick video here just showing you this little GPS device that I picked up recently. This is a Leo Bodner LBE1421. This is a GPS locked clock source. If I actually open up the box here, you can see that it's this small little tiny device here. Now what this is, is this is a dual output GPS uh, source that you can output a frequency or two frequencies rather from each output you can output uh, from one hertz all the way up to 1.4 gigahertz. You can see there are up to 3.3 volts peak to peak at 50 ohms uh, output. And the device is run off USB-C here. You basically simply connect a GPS antenna up, configure the software for your two outputs here for your frequencies that you need. You can also do one pulse per second as well. Um, so you can output up to 11 dBm. Does NEMA data as well, um, NEMA, data via a USB serial port that you can get out of the USB-C port here. Um, and again, you can get the one pulse per second out too. So this little device is very handy for a couple of reasons. Now I'm going to be using this for the dual outputs. So I have uh, with my all-star link for those that have been following along repeater builds, the repeater uses a 10 megahertz crystal uh, in, well, actually, it uses a 12 megahertz crystal. We modified it so it uses a 10 megahertz crystal uh, reference. Uh, a transmit, transmit. No, hang on, I got to get this right. A temperature compensated crystal oscillator. That's it. And what happens is, is that we do simulcast. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that all the references of the radios are all the same. And you can view more about this. You can go in, I've done a couple of videos on it and I'll link them below if you wanna um, explore more about those. But basically this will output the 10 or the 12 megahertz that I need on one port. And then it will also output on a secondary port for what I need to lock my um, voting boards, which use a 9.6 megahertz um, uh, crystal reference. So that's why I need the two outputs, one for the radio and one for the voter board. And this is where it comes in very handy for the dual outputs. Now, obviously my situation is very niche. You probably don't have uh, a need like that. However, what this is also useful for is if you do need like 10 megahertz output. So if you just simply put in a GPS antenna, you can have a single 10 megahertz output here. You can have dual 10 megahertz outputs here to run a lot of things in your shack. You could run one of these to a distribution amplifier as well. You could have one pulse per second out and then have your uh, 10 megahertz out the other port. Or you could simply use this to be able to have a frequency reference uh, signal generator. So you could use a GPS lock ge signal generator, which is a very handy piece of test equipment in the shack when you're testing things. Um, so that's where this comes in very handy. Now, I've also done a video and some information from the Leo, Bo Leo Bodner um, guys about uh, GPS locking your IC9700. Now this is where this also comes in handy. You could use this, you could use one output out of this to lock your, your 9700, and then you could use the other output as 10 megahertz as well. So there's a few different applications, um, depending on what you're gonna be doing and what you actually need it for. Now the unit also does come with this high quality USB-A to USB-C cable as well for being able to power it and also for programming and configuring. And it does come with a GPS mouse here. I think that's like five meters of cable. I've got an external GPS antenna, but if you don't have one, then it does come with one with this. I think this is magnetic as well. So this will stick down uh, to a magnetic surface. So uh, pretty much you have everything that you need ready to go. So if you go to the Leo Bodner website, we can go over here to GPS DO Precision Frequency Reference. There's, there's a few different products here that they've got. And one of them is the LBE1421. So this is the one that we were looking at here. So we can go in and open this up. Now, uh, there's obviously a data sheet here with other information as well, all to do with the output and what it actually looks like. Here's the application for Windows. If we come down here, you can download the Windows configuration software and there's also a serial port driver as well if you need that. And I've just run the software and away we go. We could see now that I've got a uh, firmware, I've got the serial number, I've got a time, a GPS position, it says that my signal is okay. And I can set my two outputs and I've also got here the ability on the first output to set whether I want it one pulse per second, NMEA or low power. So um, the outputs are enabled at the moment, so you can actually turn that off. And if you have a look here, you'll see on the front of the GPS that the lights do come on to indicate that the output 
is set there as well, so we can turn that on and off. Now, I'm not sure what FLL stands for. I think it's frequency lock loop. Uh, ticking that on and off doesn't really do too much. Enables better ADEV but lower absolute precision. So I don't know whether you need that on or off. Now, you can select what uh, GPSs you've got here. Now, I think this probably does affect your NE, M, NMEA um, output here. So you could see that I've got um, those that I can select. So if I actually deselect some of these GPSs, you'll see that it will reacquire some satellites and hopefully that will just give me the GPS strings that I need as well. Uh, I don't know about dynamic model. Most times it's probably going to be stationary. You're not going to need portable or airborne or anything like that. Now, if we actually go and open up a putty window, there we go. We've got uh, GPS data now being spat out of our comp port. So if I actually go in here, now this is in hertz, so that's outputting 10 megahertz there at the moment well, let's go the first output here let's go uh 50 5313 so i've got my uh, radio currently set on and i'll just hit set i've got, currently got my radio set on this particular um, frequency for ft8 decoding what i've done is i've just temporarily connected it up to my antenna outside i've selected low power 5313 uh, if we select now outputs enabled, we can see there that I have uh, got a carrier signal there. Um, can't hear it because I'm off frequency, but if I go down in frequency, there we go there. That's uh, one kilohertz tone there because that's the carrier that we're seeing. So and we turn that off again. So we can adjust this to wherever we want. If we go 50 to 800 and we go... Uh, set and we could see there that the output then starts up down there at the lower half of the band and we can enable and dis disable the outputs as well so very very handy to be able to do all sorts of testing um, and to be able to adjust uh, things on the fly if you want to be able to go and um, frequency lock things then it's also handy for that too now, the only thing that I have noticed here in the software is, is that there doesn't appear to be a way to be able to adjust the output power. Yes, you can tick low power, but I can't actually adjust it any lower than that. So that reduces the power to plus one dBm. It would be good if I could adjust the power up and down even more. So if you've got something where you have a limited amount of power that you can input, like for instance, uh, I think a IC9700, I think you input at minus 10, you'll need something like a 10 dB attenuator ahead of this particular device. So that's the only thing that I've noticed. Um, the resolution's really good, so you can actually go in here and put in lots more zeros. You can have a lot more resolution if you need all the way up to 1.4 gigahertz. So I'm going to use this for my All Star Link repeater system, but again, you can use it for a variety of different applications. If you want to see more about that particular system or using the 9700, how to frequency lock it using the GPS board from Leo Bodner, then there will be a link here on the screen right now.